Hi, I'm Nick with the channel Auto Technic, and today we're gonna to talk about how the 355 is regarded as the best sounding naturally aspirated Ferrari, and also how Ferrari skirted the EPA requirements in order to achieve that beautiful sound. Now there's really three things that contribute to the beautiful sound of this F355. The first and one of the more important things is the exhaust manifolds. Underneath these heat shields, it is a tubular header, but it's not your traditional four to one collector design. It's actually a four two to one collector design. The way they do that really helps contribute to the equalization of the exhaust pulses, which helps with the sound. I'll bring you guys around to the back and I'll show you the other two main contributing factors to the sound of this car. Now, this is probably the single biggest contributing factor to the sound of a 355, and this upper section of the exhaust is the catalytic converter bypass pipe. So at the tail end of our exhaust manifolds, it actually goes into a Y. When the car is at idle and at low speeds, our exhaust actually flows down through the bottom Y and through our catalytic converters. Now, we all know that the catalytic converters are replaced on all modern cars to help clean up the emissions and allow them to run cleaner at the sacrifice of power and performance. Well, Ferrari's solution was this exhaust bypass pipe, where when the car is at full throttle, our exhaust comes straight through the manifold into this bypass pipe. It merges in here, in our muffler, and out the tailpipes, reducing the power loss from our catalytic converters, but also the side benefit of that is our exhaust is merging from two paths into one, which actually acts as an X-pipe that cleans up our exhaust note, makes it a much more high pitch note, and it's in a combination of the four, the two, the one header, the catalytic converter bypass, and our X-Pipe, why the 355 sounds so good. Now it is worth noting that there is small catalytic converters in our bypass pipe. They're not nearly as large as our main catalytic converters. And obviously the size that we have on our catalytic converter does affect our sound. Now the system functions based off of a valve that's positioned right here. So this is the valve and it's a very simple pneumatically controlled valve and it just uses engine vacuum to open and close it. And it's positioned right up there and our muffler bolts on at this point. Now when we're at full power and the engine wants the bypass to open, it just supplies vacuum to this and opens our valve. And the ECU uses a little bit of an unconventional method to monitor this valve. You can see there's no sensors or anything on here to monitor if it's opening or closing or functioning. But in the muffler, there's actually a thermocouple like you'll see right here in this catalytic converter. Its job is to measure the exhaust gas temperature. Well, if we have a thermocouple positioned on the back side of the valve, if the valve is closed, we're going to have cold exhaust gas temperatures. If the valve is open, we're going to have a hot exhaust gas flowing over that thermocouple, and that's going to be read by the ECU. That's how the computer knows if the exhaust bypass is opened or closed. So we're at the back end of the car. You can see that the muffler is still left in place, and we can see the thermocouple that monitors it that's positioned in the muffler. The bypass valve sits oriented just like that. Again, the same operation controlled by vacuum, and this is what's monitoring if the valve is open or closed. So it's a very clever system that Ferrari used to get the power, performance, and sound that they wanted while still meeting the EPA requirements.